Hey, Bessie Brains, Kirby here, aka Darkening Disc, and I am alongside Ollie DePina, and welcome to episode 13 of the KO Disc Golf Show. This is episode 13, the Weedle episode. He is a poison and bug type Pokemon. Uh, famous players to wear the number 13 Wilt Chamberlain, Dan Marino, Steve Nash, Omar Vizquel, and a dishonorable mention to A Rod, because that guy freaking sucks. I hate him so much. He is such a piece of crap. Um, oh, you're going to hate this. That was uh, one of my favorite players. No, nah, he's the worst. Nah, I, I'm a big A Rod fan. I know that's a, a unpopular take from. When I grew up watching baseball, I was a Yankees fan, and I didn't really care that he left the Mariners. So everyone was like, you suck for like an A-Rod. And I was, I kind of liked it. I kind of liked the hate of liking him. So I don't have anything against him. Uh, A-Rod sucks. Um, I have such a tough time. Watch, like, my wife and I will watch Shark Tank a lot. And anytime uh -oh. an episode, I'm just like, shut up. I was like, you don't fucking know shit. You know? And she's like, you need to calm down. And I was like, I feel like my blood like boils when I hear him talk. Like, he's... He's a dumbass. I, I like I like uh, the when he's with like Big Poppy and Jeter and that commentating crew. I think they're fun too. I kind of like how uncomfortable Jeter is the whole time because <laughs> it's like Jeter does not like him and doesn't want to be there. And I was like, I kind of like Jeter even more because of that. And like Poppy's such like a showman. Like he is fun to watch for sure. Um, we're gonna give a shout out to our sponsors this week. Um, it's gonna be Cravo Organics. And um, Ollie, I didn't tell you this, but Cravo Organics is opening up a Crava bar. Um, it's going to be one of the first Crava bars in Seattle. Um, there's a few of them in Florida, but they're uh, very few and far in between. Um, the bar is going to be called Swamp Cow. Uh, okay. Sure it's going to be, where, what is it, Key Arena? Is that where um, the Kraken play right now? Climate Pledge, yep. Climate Pledge, yeah, yeah. So they're going to be pretty, like, right down the street from Climate Pledge Arena. Um, so if in that area, there, I think they're going to open July 13th. So That's go right, where I, right by where I live. Yeah, go give them a, a check out and, you know, kind of see what's up there. The place looks really amazing. I know Matt Ray has been working really hard um, in there pretty much like every day, it seems like. So I'm excited to go check it out myself. So, yeah, go check out Swamp Cow and thank you to Crab Organics. Uh, getting right into this episode, Ollie, how's, how you doing, man? How's your week been? Oh, been a busy, busy, fun week. Kind of like, yeah, my first taste of what it was like to travel and play disc golf outside of the U.S. And that was really fun going up to Raptors Knoll and doing that. First time ever going up there. So got to stay up in Bellingham with my buddy Nolan. So I really am appreciative of like letting me stay in one of his rooms and made the drive a lot easier out there. So got to see a good friend of mine and then, of course, go play in the BC Open, which was a blast. I had a great time playing in that. Um, and yeah, that was my weekend. How about you? How was your week? Um, it was good. Yeah. I mean, I was in, uh, I was in BC the whole week, um, kind of getting back today and kind of catching back up on stuff, you know, getting laundry done, cleaning the car out. Yep. Um, you know, just kind of trying to catch up on some stuff, you know, and all that. So that, uh, been good today. I feel like I, I do, I feel like I'm, I'm up to speed. So tomorrow I'll knock out some chores around the house and, you know, be fully ready to go. I'm, I'm, uh, thankful. I don't have any tournaments this weekend I'm playing kayak open next weekend. Um, so I have a, a little bit of time to kind of, you know, relax a little bit and kind of get like ready and myself ready for, for the, the next stretch of, of events and whatnot. Um, yeah, I have that feeling too. My July, I was like, okay, no tournaments this weekend. But then I was like, July is like next weekend, next weekend, next weekend. And then a little break in August and then kind of back to some more tournaments, but really excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, yeah, it's that time of year. It's like, yeah everything so um but yeah let's get right into the bc open and kind of recap that um this was your boy ollie's first mpo tournament um this kind of happened after we filmed the show last week on monday night um we were kind of chatting afterwards and i kind of like i wasn't trying to encourage you but i definitely put it in your ear a little bit that was like hey like playing ma1 kind of stinks where you got to go and play three different courses and even if you and i were going to go and practice together like you're playing the blue course and i'm playing the gold course at raptors knolls so we're not even like teeing off at the same thing we're not throwing the same shots really um and you were like could i play mpo and i was like yeah of course you could and i was like you just you know you know you know i was explaining like you only got a player pack and stuff like that you're like um, you're not the lowest rated person yeah. that would be an mpo so i was like okay like screw it 
Yeah. And like the next morning you text me and you're like, Hey, like I'm playing MPO. Let's go. And, uh, I sent you the coldest text I have sent on all of 2024. You sent me a text that was awesome. That was like, uh, what was it? Um, idol to rival. Yeah. Then you back a Thanos meme. That was like, I hope they remember you. And I, I was like, that's cold. I was like, that's yeah, like, he's going to feel that. So. Yeah, no, that was, I liked, I enjoyed that. I thought that was, fun. I thought that was great. And, yeah. uh, yeah, it was my first taste of MPO, and it really felt like a pro tournament, you know, traveling and staying there. You know, the practice rounds playing with you definitely felt, like, different than a lot of my other, like, tournaments I feel like I've done where I've, like, gone and, like, had a real game plan for what I was going to go do. And it was super awesome just to go out there and then be like, okay, like, I practice this shot. Like, I know what I, the mm -hmm. like, what I want to do here and what I can't do here kind of thing. And starting that round one was was just awesome like i really enjoyed it it was such a great feel the atmosphere the vibes the people i played with um i got to play with a couple of the other lower rated mpo players that first round and i think we were just all like we have nothing to lose like we're just gonna go <laughs> ball and so we, we all had like pretty good days so that was really fun and then another really good guy uh dan who i got to practice with one of the rounds that i didn't practice with you at raptors golds just for a few holes i got to meet him before and yeah he was really awesome and we played and I got to play with him in that first round and I ended up shooting even that first round was like 970 or so rated and uh, put me in around 28th place. And so I was feeling pretty good about that. Um, felt like there was a lot of errors like and it's actually going to be really interesting because I feel like I honestly played better. Like I don't and, and I, don't, I say this like and there's kind of like different ways to look at it, but I really feel like my like actual game plan and like how I was playing the last day was better than how I played the first day. Like, and I know my score is not reflective of that, but like I, the, the last day, I, and I'll, I'll get into this in just a little bit after I talk about day two was like, just kind of like an accumulation of like when, so like, it just seemed like I was not getting any breaks at all. Like there is, um, well, let's oh, let yeah. before we get into round three. Let's like kind of break it like round by round, and I'll yeah. kind of you know go like how we each did kind of thing. Like round one, you said you finished like at par, and I saw at one point you were three under, and um, I told you this afterwards because you came in, you caddied for me for the last like two or three holes, and uh, and I told you this like when I saw you that I have played under a lot of pressure uh, like situations where I've played, in, I've been in playoffs, you know, against Crabtree and Chandler Fry. I have um, been on lead card pressure, chase card pressure, last cash pressure, which is like huge. But there is, um, I don't know that feeling that, like of losing to my podcast face was like maybe the most pressure of all where I was like, oh shit, like all he's popping off. And I think at that time I was like par or like maybe one under. And I was like, oh man, like all he's about to like lose it. And I de it definitely like motivated me to be like, hey, like get your shit together. Like, like finish strong and like, you can't lose to Ollie. Like you got like, this is like the KO disc golf show, like championship belt on the line here. Like you got to go, man. And like, I definitely like scored like, and I was like pressing and like trying to score more. And like that little extra motivation definitely helped me kind of in that final stretch to be like, nah, I got to get him. I got to get him kind of thing. So, um, that definitely that round one was, it, it was nervy for my end too. Just seeing that, like, I was like, Oh, like, He's doing well. And like, I didn't really look, once I saw that you were three down, like I didn't look at scores again. Like I didn't see your score until like I was pretty much done or you came up. But at that time I was like, Oh, like, Hey dude, like that this is a slap in the ass. Like you got to get going kind of thing, you know? So I loved having you there. I that makes me, yeah. Like yeah. being able to be like someone that even can push you at all, like makes me feel awesome. And like, uh, I, I don't, I think about this pre like pretty often where like, I'm doing a show with you and now I'm competing in tournaments against you. But there was times where like, you didn't know who I was really. And I was signing up for those South Fork leagues, trying to get playing with you and stuff. So yeah. I remember before that round one, Roxy, cause she came up only for round two and three. Uh, she sent me a picture and it was me at my very first tournament. And it was just like, I just got last place by 42 strokes in MA4. <laughs> and I am holding my G star, uh, purple destroyer. And I have the biggest grin on my face. And she said, make this guy proud. And just like those kind of things, like it really, like I was really excited and I was like, I put in so much work and I'm still learning so much. And like, I think it just, there wasn't any feeling of like, I didn't belong there 
ever this weekend. Um, I even through the highs and the lows, I feel like I compose myself with like just like a professional mindset where like I am a, like I was a joy to be on on the cards. I felt like with other people, so that was something that I'm really proud of as well. So yeah, I mean, getting getting right into the second round. Um, uh, like, let let's talk about this. What was like your highlight of round one? Like, what do you say was like, what do you think was like either your best shot, your best save, like the birdie you didn't know if you were going to get or not? Like, what do you think was your best, like your highlight around one? Um, I would say my highlight of round one, <laughs> there was one moment where I almost went and I believe I almost went and got a turkey. So I was kind of like getting hot and that felt really cool where, and I had the box for most of that round, which felt pretty cool too, where like, you know, like I'm teeing off first and, mm -hmm. you know, like, so that was really awesome. Um, I would say getting the birdie, my, my highlight, uh, I forget the hole. It's the Eagle hole, like that has the Eagle green on it with the hazards before it. Yeah, yeah. Hole eight. Um, I did my flex forehand and I hit the, hit the, the, the wood chips and then bounced off left. It was pretty deep left, like, uh, like away from the basket and I hit a putt and just sunk that. And that was kind of like a, for two in a row. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'm competing and I'm here and stuff. So yeah, that was probably my highlight around one. Nice. Yeah. My highlight around one was, um, hole 10 was the triple Mando Mando hole. And I was telling you going into the tournament, like my grip was feeling like kind of weird and off. And that really showed, or I felt that a lot, especially when I threw that P2 and that shot, I threw just like an absolute, like, just like rocket right to like the base of the pin in all those rocks. Like I was like on the rock, like just in front of the basket where I had like, mm. a, like, a, like I was eight feet, you know, and it, and it came out of my hand and it felt good. And I felt like that really unlocked a lot of confidence in like me throwing that P2. And that's a disc that like when all else fails, I need to be able to throw that really well because that's kind of like my crutch. You know, if I can't feel like I can't throw a distance driver well, like I'll go down to a P2 and just throw that hard because I know at the end of the day, I still throw that well kind of thing. So, I had that same kind of feeling, but with my alpacas, like I think yeah. one of the rounds I like the only birdies I got were when I drove with my alpaca and it was like maybe just slowing down and, mm -hmm. you know, just giving yourself the opportunity to an it's, extent. It's all you need. I like to think of it as like my... um like it's not like my signature disc like not exactly like a like a disc that's like a signature to you but like me throwing that p2 like i want to be known like for like when i pull out that p2 everyone kind of goes oh here we go like this is gonna be a great shot because you know like kirby and that p2 are dialed in together you know and like you have i feel that way when you pull out that alpaca and i feel that way when you pull out the madrone too because you feel the madrone really well but it's like you know throwing discs like that and you're so comfortable with them and people know around you like oh he's 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 not gonna miss with that mm -hmm. like that's a huge confidence booster for you and i think that goes a really long way yeah uh, but getting into round two um we moved to the horsey coursey uh campbell valley um there was a redesign this year i talked to craig the owner and because there was so much rainfall and there's so much water this year uh, they weren't able to mow some of the fairways. So because they weren't able to mow them, he had to do kind of some last minute changes. I like the changes all in all. Um, I did ace one of his change hold one of his changes. So that felt really cool. I aced hole three, um, which is a hole that like, I got to tell you, like, as soon as we stepped up and saw it, I was like, oh, I get it. You know, there's a horseshoe of water on a horse course. Yeah. Put the basket like in the horseshoe. I was like, well, well, no kidding. Like that just makes all the sense in the world. So, um, I threw that P2, you know, going back to like gaining confidence and throwing that P2 and like how I was throwing it. Um, that basket is probably about 280 feet long. And I, um, was aiming, there's like this kind of like horse jump structure behind it. I was aiming yep. that and I was just going to hit that really hard and, uh, yeah, hit that through that P2 on a rocket, like right to the bottom of the bucket. And, got my ace so feeling really good about it we're recording this monday night and i still haven't gotten paid out for that yet so i have no idea how much you know i got for that ace but i'm excited to so you don't know how much it is i have no idea off the top of my head hmm. so i, I want to say over it's over 1500 no kidding he said yeah. there was one person that got an ace too oh there's another person yeah he said like there was one other person so i don't know if that was like by division or if it was by pool or if it was the whole yeah, on the app, there's an announcement and it said uh, it'd be super helpful if aces could be reported to the TD over 1,500 in the ace spot. So 
Nice. Could be could be well, nice. I don't know if I like I like emailed him after the tournament was like, hey, I hit an ace. I don't know. And yeah. that was me trying to be inquisitive. I didn't know I was supposed to report that. So that's cool. I'm glad that yep. worked out. Yeah, nice. Um, how was your round two though? How did you how did you fare at uh, Horsey Corsey? Um, I think it was a, like I tried to go back to like the game plan that we had. Um, definitely different for me, only playing it once, and definitely having a more rough uh, practice route. I feel like there. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it was a little harder for me. I lost a lot of the discs. I feel like like my destroyer and stuff. So I didn't have that, um, which was kind of big. And very back, did you? I never did. No, bro. That's probably like gonna be in the bushes until somebody finds it next year. Nah, that's how that goes. It's gone forever. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's gonna be. Somebody will find it next year, and you'll get a text and be like, "Is this Ollie?" And you're like, oh. <laughs> "Yeah." Um, Look back to episode thirteen. Yeah, please. <laughs> It'll be like whole. I, it's like one of the par fours back there. Yeah. It's just deep. It's like the first par four, wasn't it? Yeah, or yeah, but I got my Haley King Firebird back, so that was the money one. Yo, yeah. I went OB on that hole that you lost the Firebird at. Oh, wow. Long? Yeah, left side. Yeah, long on the left. I, went, I threw a forehand, and I just pushed it too, like, too long, and I definitely hit and then skipped over the little post. And then my putt came out of my hand, and I was like, you, oh, you nailed that. And the wind just like picked it up and I hit the top band and kind of oh. just, I was like Damn. I thought I went OB I was pushing long I skipped and then it just was like by inches it was like so close but it was in which was amazing but everything with horse course I felt like I was playing pretty I just don't feel I didn't feel like I fully committed like I had my game plan I just didn't fully commit like starting on hole one um, and, it's, and it was kind of frustrating because I feel like my biggest strength is just throwing kind of a more, more overstable disc on a stock hyzer. Like, I think it's the easiest thing for me to do. And I feel like I kind of failed at doing that at this on round two. Um, I kind of just didn't put give it the w uh, width it needed. And so it kind of found that hazard, which is just like, it's so, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be easy to find. Yeah. And I made it very easy to find. So I, I, I made bleeding out into that hazard and i saw a lot of people like either the disc would come out early because it is the first tee shot of the day so there's kind of some nerves to it or if there's just like a weird win there but like there was i mean i think there was two guys on my card that went in the hazard which is i mean none of us no one guy in my card went in the hazard but none of us birdied that out of the actually we only hole one we only had three guys and the fourth card made showed up on hole two. Oh wow yeah, he took a seven on hole one, and then he still finished one down. I was like, "No shit, dude!" Like that's like kind of shot well. <laughs> Way to fight! Way to fight! Yeah, it would have been a neg five. Like that's that's legit, buddy. So I just uh, felt like I kept putting myself like right around forty ish feet range, which isn't any by any by any means automatic. Like I can put a really good bit at the basket, but also at the same time with the weird hazards behind baskets and certain greens, it's like and slopes on hills and stuff. I I was I was definitely not feeling very good about running a lot. And the wind, too. I just wasn't feeling very good about running a lot of putts. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lot of pars. Um, I took birdies when I could, um, and I felt really good about the birdies I did get. I got to play with Adam Alexander, who I play with all the time at North Park, who helped me get a lot better just from watching him play. So that was really awesome for me in my first MPO event to be able to play with him. And uh, so that was pretty sweet. And uh, but yeah, I feel like I just wasn't giving myself the most opportunities that I needed to. And but nothing felt too bad. Like I shot even on the round, but I know I sh could have been in the like three or four range. But just from missing out the shots that I know I can make. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just some like oh. the errors I did make were like some early releases that just it hyzered out basically too early, whether it's bushes or hazard. But. Yeah. Nothing, and I was really proud about how like I was able to get out of those situations. Like I never looked at being in the bush or never looked at something as like the end of this or that. I'm like, okay, how can I advance far enough or how can I make this putt to save that kind of par thing? And I, yeah, and so that was good. Nice. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, getting right into the third round. Um, this was, without a doubt, the uh, roughest round for the two of us. Um would you would you end up shooting that final round like ten? Ten. I think I only shot negative one, which was I think like four. ten up. Yeah, just ten up. Yeah, yeah. I think I shot negative one, like, uh, four or five strokes worse than like round one. Um, 
you know, it was so much windier round three, but I'm not really going to use that as the crutch as the why I played bad. I just kind of missed a bunch of lines. I, you know, I went, I, I did really personally, I did really bad on both of the par fives. Um, the first par five, which last year I eagled this year, I went birdie par, which feels not nearly as good. And I feel like I should go birdie birdie there for the whole tournament. Um, and then the second par five, I threw a really good roller to start. And then my second shot clipped the trees and bled out of bounds. And then my third shot, I was like, oh, it's pretty windy. I'm going to like throw this PD2 on a big hyzer like up. And instead of throwing it up, I just threw it out. And I like, mm. I, I was only supposed to go like 350 and I threw it like 420. Like I threw this thing like so far and I was so out of, I was out of bounds long. At that point, I was taking a double bogey. I was seeing people find that out of bounds long more than I really thought I would, yeah. which was interesting. I think it's a lot closer than any of us realize because when I threw good shots i was throwing him like an md3 up to the basket there and then i don't know why like when i was like 40 feet behind you know what i mean like a like a good shot i was like oh i need to go all the way up to like a pd2 and it's just like i probably would have been fine with like an md3 or like an instinct or something like that would have been totally fine you can make it up and down you know for like a five or a six maybe you know but instead i like tried to go so aggressive which it just you know was kind of a bad call on my part so Mm -hmm. um, but I ended up finishing one down. I came in tied for 11th, um, which I'm like borderline disappointed in. Like I can't be too mad, but I am a little disappointed because I was shooting for that top 10 going into the tournament. Obviously I was playing for the win. You know, I always have that in the back of my mind is that I can play for the win today. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know, you know, 11th is just fine. I don't really feel like I did anything necessarily like super special other than the ace in round two. I don't feel like any of my rounds I, I played like out of my mind or I played like so well that like it was like a special type of round or special type of thing. You know what I mean? Like I just I kind of just like did my business like day in and day out kind of thing, except for that third round. So, yeah, I had some really unfortunate breaks like hold two. Um, I had such I felt like a pretty good drive. I definitely left it, let it go a little too long with my forehand. But I was like it was um like I played. Uh, it was so close, like so, so close on the line. Yeah. And I was like so close on the line where I'm like going up and down from like 60 feet for Eagle, which is like awesome. But then instead I am back in some like it was. Yeah. And then I went from that to an OB and then it just yeah accumulated after that. But I felt and then hole three was just kind of like I didn't get on the hill. So up and down and then hole four, I threw the sweetest roller and I got like just left of the gap but i was like kind of looking at the basket and i was like kind of lining it up and i was getting ready and i'm like going like this and i'm kind of doing my thing trying to figure out what i'm going to do and my hand my arms just starts hitting and it's like burning and i got into these really bad nettles oh. and so my arm is like red and bubbly and like on fire and i'm like okay whatever and i throw it out and i just was a terrible upshot and so then i end up going from best drive to like possible birdie in the group to like now a hard par putt which i ended up bogeying that hole um but yeah. i didn't let anything get me down like i don't think one bogey or one thing is getting me down to the point where like i'm always thinking next shot and next hole like the hole five like right after that hole four and you having the nose hole five i had an eagle opportunity which felt like amazing so it's yeah. like going from that to that is like i just felt like no matter what i really showed i can compete um, there was, uh, what is it? It's hole 15 where we played from the blue pads. Yeah. Um, I had a, I felt like a really great drive hits like, you know, just the like random, like treat, like what, like had a really great forehand. It's going, it's like the hits a branch go. So it goes into like the bushes a bit. Okay. I'm like, I could try to do this like hero shot, go up and over everything. Or I could just like pitch out, take my medicine. I try to pitch out, hit it, hit a tree going into that. I'm in like another spot. So I'm like trying to make the right plays and kind of didn't mm -hmm. so yeah. it's like i i don't like it never got to me where i'm like oh i was just a stupid mistake i was like that was just me not executing it i don't think the every the decision was fine with it so i was able to I, yeah i'm having a lot more fun i feel like and keeping a smile on my face i played with um this really cool kid named carver mm -hmm. uh i really really enjoyed him and he carver whitford and uh after the round he was like just told me how it was like a pleasure to play with me. He's like, even though I wasn't like playing how I wanted to and I was playing bad, like 
just like I was a good vibe on the card. So having good players that have people like in like kind of have that like experience still and be someone that is uh good on the card is something I can always take away. So yeah, that's learned great. a lot and uh, definitely wish I scored better that last round. I feel like I could have just been like if I even because I feel like round one, I was like going to be like one of my I, th- I thought I could have improved from that a little bit. And so I think even if I was able to improve a little bit from that, I could have been sitting anywhere from like 34th, 35th, 34th spot. So up like 20 spots from where I was ending 55th. Yeah. So you had but, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I I just no matter what, though, I feel like I am able to compete in that. And so going to be doing some more tournaments, I feel like an MPO and then figuring that out. So I'm excited for that. Cool. Good. Yeah, totally. Um, one of the weird things for me was uh, I did not birdie the triple Mando hole on round three, and I missed the island on round three. Um, but also in round three, to make up for those two like stupid mistakes, um, hole six, you know, the really tough one where you got to throw. I, my drive landed where most of my approach shots were landing. You know how I was kind of throwing that like approach shot to the left side of the hill? like kind of in the gully, kind of like up on the hill a little bit. That's mm-hmm. where my drive landed. Um, so I birdied the whole six and I was like, holy shit, like I've never been so far out here. Like, this is awesome. I threw an FD3 like really, really high. And I think I made it through um, like that last tree that I kept crashing into. I think mm. I went over it and just kind of like, I almost went OB on the left side, like long, like it was crazy. And then on hole 15 that you were talking about, hey, kind of, we kind of were going for the hero shot. I threw a splice on a forehand and I snuck in all like I didn't go around the corner I meant to. I snuck in before that tree and I was all the way up, like almost in the sewer, like that little ditch gully. Like wow. I was two feet away from OB where I could just throw like a backhand hyzer and I got a birdie on that too. Sweet. So I birdied six and 15, which are probably two of like the tougher birdies to get on that course without even looking at the stats, just knowing like those are really hard gets, but I didn't get the Island hole and I didn't get the triple Mando hole, which both feel like must gets on that course as well. So my round was all over the freaking place. Um, Chandler Fry and uh, Scott Withers had a really crazy kind of battle all the way to the end. Um, Scott, uh, took the lead for the tournament. Well, he got a birdie on hole two and he pretty much rode that all the way until hole 17 of the final round. Uh, he finished round one in the lead by a bunch of strokes. He finished round two in the lead by a bunch of strokes. And then Chandler caught up to him during that third round and beat him by a stroke. Um, I was watching that final hole. It was really crazy. Scott had the putt for or to push a playoff um chandler didn't throw a great drive on 18 and then laid his putt up and i think he was maybe 10 12 feet short for his layup and scott was long maybe 20 feet on the other side with like a pretty good uphill putt and uh scott just kind of hit the rim with it and it dropped and everybody knew like chandler had it at that moment it was pretty electric honestly the finish was wild um i think you know, after round one, people were kind of like, wow, Scott Withers is just going to, like, run away with this thing. And uh, to see Chandler win, you know, I'm pumped for Chandler. I love him. He's such, like, a good good person. I love play- the few times that I've gotten the opportunity to play with him. Um, he's been awesome to play with. I did get an opportunity to play with Thomas Gilbert, all-around nice guy. Uh, super, super fun and, and um, good chatting with him. Casey Hennemeyer. It's my third year in a row playing with Casey. Uh, he and I were chatting about it. We're like, we play with each other every year now, three years in a row. He's like, yep. I was like, cool. <laughs> I was like, that's all three years that I've played here. So that's awesome. Um, so good people. Um, I love that tournament. Um, I, I, I think it's just one of my absolute favorites. Yeah, um, I'll definitely be back. That was for my first time doing it. And I loved it. I love Raptors. Noel is one of my favorite courses. I yeah. think that Golds was amazingly fun. Yeah, you have a special attachment to it too because it's your first MPO tournament ever. So there's, there's I got oh, I got the socks yeah. and the shirt. You know, I got. Our, oh, cool. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. They're doing a fire sale because I think you know. I, I mean, I was there like they had a bunch of player packs left, and I was like, oh, I wonder why. Yeah, I was I, like let me go grab my player. Pack. That's funny. I love that. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna go through the winners real quick. Uh, Chandler Fry won MPO. Scott Witters got second. Shout out to Colin Bryant, who got third. Axel Olsen, ECD teammate, got fifth. 
uh, Carter seventh, um, Nick Culver got tenth. I tied with Tyler Schrock at eleventh. Um, going down, Sophia Denecki, uh, she won FPO. Nobody was surprised. She's amazing. Uh, another ECD teammate, Kenny Clark won MP40. Love it. Good for him. Uh, Sally West won MP40. Uh, MP50 was won by David Fielding. MP60 was won by Chris Hartman. Justin Plett won MA1. A lot of MA1 players. Uh, FA1 was won by Chandler Rye. MA40 was won by Glenn McDonald. Uh, FA40 was won by Tara Trammell. FA MA50 was won by Randall Parsons. MA60 by Duncan McDonald. MA70 by Craig Burkett. MA MA2 by Gavin McLean. Uh, FA2 by Sierra Van Elberg. MA3 by Dax Fielding. Uh, I met him on the in the parking lot. He lives local. Um, FA3 Elizabeth Hill, and then MJ15 uh, Judah Hawks. A lot of divisions. There's like 450 players in this tournament. This has got to be one of the biggest tournaments. It's got to be the biggest tournament in Canada. I can't imagine they're doing one with more participants in it. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't think so. At least on yeah, maybe on the east side or something like that. Maybe. I just yeah, I just don't even know. But on the west side, probably. Yeah. Sweet. Um, all right. Moving right along, uh, next segment is going to be one of the newer segments that we added to it. This is uh, the trivia game. So last week I asked Ollie uh, five questions about AGL and that kind of thing. <laughs> um, and this week it's Ollie's turn to quiz me. So Ollie, what uh, what topic are we doing this week? We're doing Disc Mania. Okay, this was uh, the sponsor as well. Okay. Okay, do you remember how many you got right last week? I, I think I'm at like one or one and a half, depending on how doing the answers. So like, I think one and a half is fun. So then if you get two, you win. If you get one, you win. Okay, because like, uh, I'm not going to lie. I don't know much about like just mainly history and that kind of thing. So there's some pretty, I, I get that I didn't go too hard. Uh, I'm curious to see what you came up with. So I, I think there's, right. yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with the, I, I, a pretty chill one. What is the Discmania slogan? Reinvent your game. Yeah, there we go. That's a softball. Come on. Come on. I had to give you an easy one. Yeah, okay. I don't... We should, Where's I should... the Discmania warehouse located? I think there's two answers to this right now. Yeah. They have a warehouse in Colorado, but most of Where the... Where in Colorado? Uh, it's not... It's, uh, it's like... Uh, it starts with like a W, but most of the stuff is coming out of Emporia, Kansas right now. Oh, well... That was like one of the big things like that happened in the last like two months as they switched their whole warehouse over to Emporia. Oh, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> I was looking for the Colorado answer, but oh, oh yeah, it was like Wilmington or something. Yeah, like it's that. Wilmington. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I got I got that right. So yeah, we'll give it to you. That was cool. What was the first Disc Mania disc mold? Is it the P two? I have no idea. Then yeah. MD one mid disc M- one. No kidding. Okay, cool. I had no idea. And then when was Discmania created? Uh, Founded. 1998. I think you're like kind of close with that answer, kind of, but it's founded in 2006. But the Uh, like origin story uh, like that he says was like when he first played disc golf or something like that. uh, So but so that was something in the 90s but no it was founded in 2006 2006? and him and and his him and his dad created it i think i don't know what the other company was but he said they created a company in 2001 is that uc yeah yeah okay yeah i wasn't totally sure about that so two out of four that's okay okay i mean so i guess you got the win so now they're just doing a victory lap and so you're (laughs) yeah how many molds does disc mania have in total and I, I think this number's changed now with the most recent, uh, what is the new Evolution Line disc? It's like, Total? It's like the Notion, is that the new one? Yeah, that's the new one. So I think it would go up for whatever answer I have here. Oh, does this count, like, um, 
like Innova made stuff too. I don't know if it counts it as like twice, you know. Yeah, like an Innova. But like if there was only Innova made it that mold for them, I think it's counted. I don't know. Okay. I have a number and I feel pretty good I, about it. Man, I'm guaranteed. sixty. Sixty with the notion. It was fifty nine and then I this was in January twenty uh January seventeenth, so unless there's like 60. two discs. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't have guessed that. I was gonna so, already, I was gonna take the L on that pretty hard. So yeah. A little yeah. two out of four. I'm, I'm excited for I'm excited for where this goes because I don't think we know too much about the history of our sponsors and their good learning points. And I hope you learn yeah. something from about Discmania and that. But uh, I'm excited. I not, when I was brainstorming some stuff to quiz you on, like you know, giving you a Red Sox quiz where I go and try to find some really good Red Sox questions and yeah. different things like that. I think will be fun. If anybody has any suggestions about you know what they want uh, all your me to quiz each other on. Um, please put it in the comment section below, you know, or message us privately and be like, hey, here's five questions about the subject. Like, hey, Roxy, you know, if you know something, if you want to quiz Ollie about something, like, actually, that would be hilarious. If I was, <sighs> I'd be like, give me five questions about your relationship. Oh, my gosh. I think I would do really good on that. I, I think, think you would. I think I'd do pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be like kind of a funny one. We'll see. We'll see. No, I like that, that, though. I like that, though. I think Roxy would be very down to it. Yeah. Give you some answers. So. Yeah. Um, all right, so next we have something kind of fun and kind of special. Um, I got a box from Dismania today, so I figured I would pop this open um, on on the podcast, and we'd kind of go through what's in here. I have a pretty good pretty good idea of uh, what they sent me and what I got. I did order it, um, but I haven't actually seen them, so I'm excited to kind of check out what each of these look like. So. Nice. All right. Up first is going to be a couple of the new, I think these are the Color Glow Sea Line Vanguards. So oh. that looks nice. Yeah. It's pretty flat top. Doesn't really have too much dome to it. What's that classic line? Feels good in the hand. Uh, these are nice. <laughs> They're like a, they're like kind of overstable. I don't know how overstable these are. I heard the those Vanguards are actually kind of flippy. And really? I heard, yeah. Hello? Yeah, I heard those ones are a little flippy. I okay. heard they have some nice, like, flight to them. Nice. Yeah, this purple one's a little flatter top, it feels like. It's pretty sick, though. I like this. Feels good. I mean, I don't know. I might, I'm going to go out tomorrow on the field and throw these a little bit, kind of see what's up with them. A couple of color glow vanguards. Cool. I have some field work I need to be doing. I need to do. Ooh. All right. This is the thing that I've been the most excited for. Uh, these are Team Dismania stamped. This is the MG4. Um, oh, this is the thing that I've been waiting on. Um, I really love this one. This one's probably going to go in the bag like now, like <laughs> right now. Yeah, like immediately, like two minutes ago. Um, it's it's nice. It has a kind of a beat on there. I have one of the old um, MD4s. Also has a micro beat on the rim. I mean, they look pretty good. Feels yeah. Pretty similar to it. I mean, they. I mean, I feel like they got the shape down really nice. That feels great. So yeah, I got two of those. I'll definitely. You'll definitely be throwing. Seeing me throwing these really soon. I've been so excited for these. I don't love throwing the MD threes. They're a little too straight. Um, so if mm. you are looking for like a really straight uh, mid range that has just like a baby like stability at the very end, the MD three is great for that. But I want something with a little harder of a hook. So I think these MD4s are going to be awesome. I'm so excited to go out and throw these tomorrow. Sweet. What is... Oh, yeah. Nice. These are cool. They sent me a couple of Team Dismania stamped uh, functions. This is the really understable 8-speed uh, uh, fairway driver. Oh, from, wow. Yeah, they're super, super understable. This is what I was using on, like, hole four out at Raptors Knoll, where I just kind of throw that, like, flat shot that kind of, or, like, tilted towards the ground. So these are nice. I like having the Team Dismania stamped ones. I'll probably throw one of these in the bag right away, too. That's cool. Sweet. That one that I'm using is pretty fresh. And then, nice, these are cool. The Showstopper. This is the uh, Ella Hansen, the Color Glow Halo. What do they call it? The... Horizon. Elegant signature series Glow Horizon FD. So, looks cool. I really like this one. That one I looks heard really those nice. are a stable FD. 
and I heard so like I heard the vanguards were like a like a touch less stable vanguard, and I heard these are like a more stable FD. So it's pretty yeah. cool. Okay, yeah. I tell you what, I think um, I think I want to give this one away to I don't know, like what do you think? Like we're do some kind of giveaway. I think like- we should do some kind of giveaway. I mean, we should do something. I think we're getting pretty close to a hundred followers too. Okay. And then uh, we do some kind of thing on Instagram, make a post, and do it like a tag kind of thing. Would be kind of cool. Yeah, we'll do that. So if you um, share this, share this YouTube video, and uh, tag Ollie or myself in it, and uh, you get a chance to win this uh, Ella Hansen Showstopper Color Glow Horizon FD, and um, you know, get us to a hundred. And if we get to two hundred, I'll uh, I'll give away. I don't know if uh, Team Dismania stamp function. If you get followers before the end of July, how about that? Okay, tag so, us in on our on your stories and stuff. We'll be looking at yeah. those. Yep, you can tag me. I'll I'll be making a list of that as well. Totally. Yeah, send us send it to us. Uh, screenshot it and send it to us, and uh, we'll make a list and pick somebody at random and see. Yeah. So this guy this guy will be uh, giving away pretty soon, and if you get us to two hundred, we'll give away this guy. Team Dismania stamp function. Sweet. All right. Um, that was cool, man. I'm super excited to go out and throw tomorrow. That's now. awesome. Yeah. No, I, I, once I saw the Vanguards, I was like, I think you might be going to be fiddling with this MD4 for the rest of the night. <laughs> That's what she I said. I got a <laughs> little disc. I've been Ooh, messing around with. This is a, what a, a what a 50. Uh, it has pine needles in there. Those are pine needles. Okay. So, what is it? It has a smell. It's a manzanita. Manzanita, put it up yes. to the quick. Yeah, dude, I smell the pine needles, man. That smells great. Yeah. This one's unthrown. I have one that's really beat in that I have two aces with at North Park that I love. Yeah. So I, yeah. I have one. I'm going to keep one unthrown. There's only 50, and I know Josh, yeah. the owner, has a lot. But yeah. Hell yeah. Um, all right, so moving on uh, to... The draft this week, this one I'm really excited about. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, we are drafting non-edible stuff that we want to eat. Uh, and this is going to apply to anything that is not edible and that you kind of just sometimes want to just like put in your mouth and kind of come on or eat or whatever it might be. So once again, I'm, I'm really slacking. Traveling has really kind of got me distracted. I didn't do a, a poll last week. So, Ollie, do you want the first pick, or do you want number two and number three? We'll give it to you this week. Okay. Uh, my number one thing that I want to eat that is not edible is Play-Doh. Okay, that's on my list. I was I was wondering if there's a consensus number one, because I, I got I, some ideas. I think Play-Doh is such, like, a, a staple in, hey, don't eat that, you know, type mentality with stuff. Um, I don't know. And then, you know, what was really fucked up with them is they made it scented. And then it's like, well, now you're like literally like asking children to like put that in their mouth and ingest that. So, They're already here. It's like, what's the next move? You just. At this point, just make, just make it edible for them. Like, that's crazy. Um, all right. What do you got for number two and number three? Okay. Number two. I'm going to go with those like little uh, uh, Thai detergent laundry pots. Laundry pods, okay. Yeah, uh, was, I, I've I've just always I've always thought they look like they you know they look like yeah. just like a crazy big boba or something and like yeah. I don't yeah. know they look pretty. I've I've been not tempted. I wouldn't say that or anything like that. I mean, that but that was like the trend a couple of years ago with kids, and that's why they were like locked behind the Tide Pod Challenge grocery store. Yeah, these kids are dumb yeah, because um, they look good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what do you got for number uh, what, number four? Or number three, sorry. A classic, you know, scent, good-smelling candle. A candle. You know, you know, a waxy candle, you know, Ellie different colors. A candle at 1.2. And I was like, I don't know if that's really me. But that's interesting. Candle, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, for the number four pick, I am going to pick... Um, I'm going to pick uh, insulation. Oh, okay. Like the, like, cotton candy looking stuff. Yeah, dude, exactly <laughs> that. That cotton candy looking shit in the wall that you're going to get all, like, you're going to die from touching. <laughs> but, yeah, insulation, dude, tell me that you haven't looked at that and been like, I kind of, just a little, 
Um, so that's a, that's a that's my number four pick, and then for my number five pick, I'm going to pick um, Orbeez. Oh, wow, that's Dude, amazing. When you look at those, like they look like candy, you know. And especially, I they just they look like they look like gummy bears that are like hydrated, you know. So Orbeez are my number my number five pick. Okay. Yeah. What you got for number six? So number six, my third pick, we're going to go, you know, like the little ends of thumbtacks, you know, like thumbtacks, like those little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what thumbtacks are. <laughs> yeah, you know how they have like the bright ends and stuff? I think they, they look kind of good. Like candy. <laughs> They're like forbidden candy. The ends of thumbtacks, huh? I just put thumbtacks in there. Screw it. I'll okay, put the whole thing in. Thumbtacks? You just want to eat the whole thumbtack? Okay. Cool. I mean, I don't... Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm down with it. Yeah. If you see, like, a cup and they're all in there, it looks kind of delicious. It looks, it looks like, like a cup of candy. Want... Yeah, or something like that. Or, yeah. like, when they're, like, in a little sewing thing, you know, like, you know, like, uh, like, yeah, that's how I think about it. Okay. That. Um, hey, Ama Dapina, if you're still watching, you should hide all the thumbtacks in the house. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, what you got for number seven in your final pick? We're going to go with chess pieces. Chess pieces? <laughs> okay. Uh, just, I'll make a little explanation on that one for sure. I just think, you know, like, maybe it's not something that, like, I, like, would put it... Like, sometimes I'll, like, chew on, like, a little plastic thing or something like that. But, like, I don't know. I was thinking about stuff that I think that I would want to eat that just... If I could eat or, like, maybe if I could make it, like, a chocolate chess piece or something. I don't know. What's your number one chess piece that you can put in your mouth right now? Uh, definitely the queen. Bro, we got children that watch this show. That's not cool. <laughs> Jojo, Dylan, close your ears. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Earmuffs, earmuffs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's really, okay. Right, okay, I'll take castle then. Because they like the rounded, you know, the rounded ends. Yeah, that's, those look good. They look, they, they look mad good. Or like a pawn. You, you know... I mean, the pawn is the most phallic one. Had you said pawn, we all know what that means. <laughs> um, all right, so <laughs> moving right along to the number eight pick, I am going to grab. Uh... Did you? Can you hear him? I heard that. Yeah, I'm gonna pick geodes. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. They look like rock candy, you know. Um, so some. So d to recap on our list, real quick. Oh God. <laughs> My list is Play-Doh, Insulation, Orbeez, and Geodes. I think you're winning. Laundry Pods, Candles, Thumbtacks, and Chess Pieces. I think Laundry Pods are low-key would be the disputed that's, one. I think Laundry <laughs> Pods are my carry. I mean, there are people who literally are trying to eat them for the internet stuff, so. But um, they're not edible. <laughs> they're not edible, no. Some of my uh, honorable mentions here, I have Happy Balls. Okay. Uh, those always look really appetizing. Um, erasers as a kid. I, I'm looking at an eraser right now, and I was like, oh, I should have said eraser. I think eraser. you want on that a little bit. Yeah, totally. Um, shaving cream, rubber, glow sticks, and slime. Those the Slime is... Oh, of, slime would be... Yeah. Interesting. I would have argued slime and Play-Doh are kind of the same thing in a way, but I don't know. Yeah. So, that was well, fun, I yeah. enjoyed that actually a lot. That was pretty fun and like kind of just yeah, goofy. Got to be creative and for fun sure. and goofy with that. Yeah. So go over to the community tab. I will actually make a graphic uh, tomorrow when we post this episode today on Tuesday when we post yep. this episode. Um, so yeah, go to the community tab um, and vote for who you think had the best list of non-edible stuff that you would like to eat. And then to end off the show. Got a little quote. Amazing show as well. I'm really excited uh, to be competing yeah, MPO and then uh, excited for next week to be talking about uh, some KPO previews and stuff like that. Um, but to end with a little quote from Wilt Chamberlain, one I really like, I thought was funny. Everybody pulls for David. Nobody roots for Goliath. <laughs> That's cool. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, don't forget, aim high, shoot low, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>